This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. I really want to talk about a concept that is uh, important in, um, to all sections, to all people. And uh, it's Shlom Bait, peace in the house. But I don't have partners. And, uh, and it's very hard to share the real wisdom of Shlom Bait because Real, the real wisdom of Shlom Bayit, peace in the house, healthy and right and holy relationship of a man and a woman is something that is in the peak of the world, in the peak of all worlds. It's Yichud Kud Shabrichu Shchinte. It's the connection between the the male side to the feminine side, so to speak, of the Creator. Means that when the Creator created the world, so He created the world with duality. But He Himself doesn't have no figure, no shape, no dividings, so He is one. In Him there is no male and female, there are no parts, it's only Him and He is one. But in the moment that he brought himself down, so there are, the creation started with him making combinations. First of all, Bereshit bara Elokim et ha-shamayim ve et ha-aretz. The, 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 the heaven and earth. It, it, it started like that. That was the beginning. So, the real connection of us to the Creator is in that unity, in that peace between Shamaim Va'aretz, heaven and earth. And it, it's in the secret of, of, of relationship, it's, it's to make peace between Shamaim Va'aretz, that there's not going to be a war between heaven to earth, that there's going to be peace between the angels and all spiritual forces that are running the systems under the guiding and, and the will of Hashem. And when it's going down to, to, to our life, to all the details of our lives, to, to, so, so we can work on our peace in the houses, on our relationships, and, and, and even not only in the Jewish, so to speak, kosher house. Relationship relationships all over the place even even between animals you have when when noah was uh, was calling the the animals to come to to his ark to the holy ark so so the the kosher animals they came in pairs they came in couples like what does that mean like animals doesn't supposed to come in couples. Animals, they're, they're going with their species, with their kind, but not in, in couples. But because of the holiness of Noah, because that Noah was such a righteous man, even his animals, the animals that were worthy to come closer to him, were animals with, with manners, with purity, with a good nature, that they realized the real will of the Creator from his creation. And we know that one of the reasons for the flood, for the destruction, is that animals were going with species that are, were different than them. That people are going and, 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 and mixing themselves in, in weird ways. This is, those are very deep reasons for, for the destruction. Now, I as a person, I'm not willing to talk about this issue from the religious side of it. I can use the, um, the, um, the world of concepts of the Jewish religion and tradition and Jewish rules as a tool to, 
to use the, the vocabulary of what that is right and what that is wrong, but people that fell from the high intention of Judaism, the ancient one, the real one, and today they are just religious, they're not following the will of Hashem even while keeping the rules of Halakha, the rules of the Jewish books. For an example, why? Because you have rules like purity, that a woman should go to the mikveh before of the wedding and on, and that the mitzvah of the husband to be with his wife in her, in like when she wants to be with him, mitzvah ona. So people can look at those rules and to try to, to like to to bring out from them and halachic conclusions like rules, paragraphs of rules of what you should do, how many days you should count, exactly how and in which way and how you do and what you do and what is allowed and what not and what the thought is supposed to be, with which intention and on. And there are many reasons to be strict about it and there are many reasons to be light and mekel about it and like there are many many rules and definitions and explanations. But for an example, all of the aspect of ben adam lechavero between people like behavior, manners, being nice, being polite, like not insulting, not hurting the emotions of your friend, never disgrace him or her, um, that you're not allowed to say bad comments because you're not allowed to rebuke unless you're worthy to rebuke, and so many, 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 many aspects of the will, the divine will of the Creator, the real expectations of the Creator from us are not being considered while people today are claiming to judge and set rules by the rules of the Shulchan Aruch. It's like, no, you must do this, no, you must do that, and if not, so you can divorce her and you can do this and she can do that, and like, it's all set of rules that are, are, are closing the people in some very narrow space, t tiny space, that is limiting their connection to the divine will, to the reason of all reasons, to the will of all will, the will of Hashem that gave us that set of rules. That we will know from those rules what is the real will of Hashem and will connect ourselves to Him while keeping to our mitzvot. So it's kind of complex, but what that I'm trying to say is that to explain what that is good and what that is bad or wrong by the rules of Judaism will not going to bring us to keep God's will, Hashem's will, to connect ourselves to Hashem. And not because that we don't need to keep and follow those rules, just because that we need to understand that the intention is missing from our function while just being observant, so to speak, and imagining to ourselves that we're keeping Torah mitzvot, the rules of Hashem. Because when you pray without an intention, so it's like a body without a soul. So if you're standing and you're praying Shemona you stand in front of Hashem and you say, Hashem, Sfatai Tiftach, Ufi Agiti Latecha, Baruch Ata Hashem, Elokein Veloke Avotein, Veloke Avram, Veloke Yitzchak, Veloke Yaakov. And you continue on and on with no misspellings, with no mistakes, every blessing in its right place and by the right order, and you're pronouncing the words perfectly, but you were not putting Hashem in your mind in front of you. So the Rambam is saying that all of your prayer 
is not is never been accepted and you were not praying at all. And even after the fact, and even Bidiyavad, if you want to say stand Shmona Isra and to pray in front of Hashem, and you're not thinking that Hashem is with you, so the Rambam is saying you were not praying. Even if you said all the words you just read from the Siddur, so okay, what are we doing with thousands of people on daily basis standing in Beit Knesset, in synagogues, and reading Shmona Isra from the Siddur, hopefully pronouncing it right, hopefully remembering all the blessings, hopefully completing the prayer like it should, even in the physical aspect of it, even just in the words, but with no heart, with no intention. So there is another opinion that is saying that if you had that thought, even in the beginning that you are standing in front of Hashem, so in the end, after the fact, we will consider your prayer as a prayer. But it's one opinion, and there are others opinion, other opinions. But bottom line, we understand from it that just to hold the Siddur and to read from it, that's not the will of Hashem. The will of Hashem is not that we will read. It's not that we will say, the will of Hashem is that we will pray. So now, the concept of prayer is to stand in front of the Creator and to ask your requests from Him, or to confess on your mistakes in front of Him, to Him. So you must have Him in your mind while praying, or else you're not praying. Simple, it's a, that's the pshat, that is the simple, most simple understanding of the meaning of prayer. So also, in Shalom Bayit, in relationship, yes, you have the Jewish rules that are telling you exactly what is allowed and what is not allowed, what's supposed to be and what's not supposed to be. And you have many, many ways to find your way when it's hard for you, when it's hard for her, when you need something, when she needs something. You have many, many ways to find yourself in the guidings, in the rules, in the black and white paragraphs of the Shulchan Aruch. But... This is the book. This is the body. Where is the soul? The neshama. That is the intention. That is your desire to be connected to the will of Hashem. So, when we want, when I want to speak about Shalom Bayit, I'm not going to just come and give a class in Halakha on what are the rules of Judaism. I'm going to just come to the root of the issue and We'll try to speak a little bit about this concept that calls Shalom. What is Shalom? Shalom Bayit, peace. So peace is between, is, is when people become friends. That's that peace. That is peace. Now, maybe peace started in time of war. There was a war and then they made peace. That's one aspect of peace. And peace can be also something that is growing from inside. They just love each other, respect each other, care about each other, and live peacefully together in peace. So those are the two uh, uh, ways of peace to come into the house. First of all, it can grow from inside, or that it can come as a conclusion of to realizing that war is not something that we're willing to, to have. And then we're trying to build our peace. So, really to achieve peace in the house, and to bring the blessing of Hashem into our houses, like that it's written that the Creator couldn't find a better vessel to contain the blessing, except of peace, is while us being similar to Him. We must be like Him if we want peace to be in our houses. Because one of the names of Hashem is Shalom, is peace. Ani Shalom, Ushmi Shalom. The name of Hashem in Barach is peace. So, when we want to bring peace to our houses, we must compare ourselves to Him. We must work on ourselves to become like Him. Now, many, many times, you know, people want to pretend that they are Elvis Presley or Michael Jackson. So they're going to wear outfits that look like Michael Jackson or Elvis Presley, and they're going to cut their hair like Elvis Presley and on, 
and they're gonna like put one glove on their hand and will think that they're Michael Jackson. Even they know how to moonwalk. Great, whatever. They're not Michael Jackson by that. They're not Elvis Presley by that. It's uh, like, it's silly. You can have other people in different sections that they want to be like that righteous man and everyone will wear their hat like him. Gonna wear the same jacket. No, I don't, gonna imitate him and gonna think to themselves that by doing that they become him. They're not. You're not. So also when you want to become like Hashem, so even, even more so. The things that you need to do really to become like Hashem is first of all to know who Hashem really is. Because if you just like have your own illusion of who Hashem is, like that person that he thinks that he knows who Elvis Presley is or who his rabbi is, and he thinks that if he will dress like him so there is some connection between them, there is no. He was someone else. He was someone different. If it was Rabbi Akiva or Lehavdil, if it was Elvis Presley. It's, 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 it's a human being with a soul, with, with, with an inner cargo, with character, with, with different spirit. And he was himself. And you will never be like him by just wearing his outfits or wearing something that's similar to his. So also, when we want to become like Hashem, we cannot just cover ourselves with things that we imagine compared to ourselves that Hashem holds. Like Jewish rules, like Halakha. You need to have the soul of Hashem. You need to bring into your will to want whatever Hashem wants from you. So for that, we must attach, connect ourselves to the Midah of Truth. Because the verse is saying, Emet shalom ehavu. The truth and the peace will bring love. Means that you cannot come to peace without truth. You cannot reach the truth without having peace and love. And you cannot reach love without having truth and peace. This is a triangle. And that triangle, you cannot cut it. You cannot separate those three concepts. Those are three things that must go together if you want to achieve completion. So, every person received from heaven a gift that is called... I don't know how it's called. But I will call it the ability to sense, the ability to recognize the truth. Like the verse is saying, Divrei emet nikarim. You have a sensor inside of yourself that can sense and feel the truth. Now, you cannot sense if this book is a book of truth or if Chas Shalom it contains lies inside of it. That's not one of the powers of your sensor of truth to sense if this book is a book of truth or not. This is not something that you can do. And a person that will come and say, this book is a book of lie, this book is a book of truth, he will need to explain how he came to that conclusion because he doesn't have a sensor for that. Maybe he really checked all that book from A to Z and now he came with the right conclusions. Maybe he's right, but he will have to explain. That is not the sensor that we were talking about. The sensor that we're talking about is an inner sensor that feels the truth about yourself. When someone is telling you something, when you feel something, when something happened in your life, you have inside of yourself the ability to feel what you feel about this situation. You have the ability to feel if it's good for you or bad for you. If it's connecting you or disconnecting you. And you know the truth about your feelings. That's the power of your sensor, to sense the truth about yourself. If I'm asking you, can you come tonight to the class and you choose to say no, you know exactly why you answered it. If from a real reason or because you're lazy or you don't want to. You know about yourself the real truth about why you answered no. That is the ability of our sensor to sense the truth. We can sense the truth about ourselves if we are being truthful or if we are lying. 
Why you haven't woke up in the morning? Because I went to sleep late. Is it because you went to sleep late or because you're lazy? If there was a million dollar, would you answer the same? No, you would wake up one hour before, maybe probably you wouldn't go to sleep, not to risk that deal. So you know about yourself that the fact that you went to sleep late is only your excuse. But it's not the truth. The truth is that in the morning you rather to went to sleep and to keep on sleeping. Or that at night you didn't even set the alarm. Or that when you set the alarm you didn't pay attention. And when you heard the alarm you didn't pay attention. And you didn't mean even to what you know the truth about yourself. Now, so when we want to achieve peace in the house, when we, when we want to have real healthy, blooming relationships, then we need to set our sensor to the midah of truth. If you want to have peace in your house, if you want to reach love with your soulmate, with your partner, you must be attached, connected 100% to the truth. You cannot lie. And when a person is saying the truth, so the Shekhinah, the power of heaven, the Hashem Himself, is blessing him in all of his actions. Like that it's written that Hashem is close to everyone that will call him with truth. When you are holding Midah of truth, the attribute of truth means that you're an honest person, a loyal person, a truthful person that never lies. Then Hashem is close to you and the blessing will surround you. And you will be blessed in your fields, you will be blessed in your properties, you will be blessed in your house, with your children, with yourself, with your learning, with your prayers. You will be a blessed person because Hashem Elokechem Emet, because your God is the God of truth. And when you're saying the truth, you're close to God. And the person that is a liar, that is lying, the Creator cannot stand him, cannot stand by his side. Like the verse is saying, Dover shekarim lo enav. A person that is lying is not standing in front of Hashem. And even if you go to do six hours prayer, hitbodadut, individual prayer in front of Hashem, but you are a liar, so the Creator, in a way, will hide His face from you and will not gonna be there for you to answer your prayers. Because you're a liar. So for... An example, a person can see that in his house he's got issues, his wife, she's not listening to him, always arguing with him, rebuking him on every step, every decision that he makes she thinks the opposite, she's screaming at him, insulting him, and he decides to go to the field and to pray for Shalom Bait. So he will go to his wife and tell her, listen, I'm going to pray on our relationship, it cannot be that we're fighting all day long, and he's going to the field. And now he's standing all alone, imagine to himself that he's an angel, angel of God that chose the path of prayer and he will go now to find the real salvation through Hashem and he will go and bark like a dog for six hours on Hashem give me give me my wife she's not listening to me no matter what I say she says the opposite she's always arguing please Hashem bring understanding between us and he's lying because what that really he wants but he's afraid to ask, is that his wife will shut up and that she will follow him and do whatever he commands her to do. And that's the end of the story. He wants quiet. He wants control. He wants power. He wants her to surrender and worse. But he's not saying it. And he's claiming other claims. And he's asking and requesting other things to Hashem, from Hashem, because he's too embarrassed to admit in his weaknesses that he is being lazy and that he doesn't want to be criticized because he doesn't want to deal with his weaknesses and his lackings. And he doesn't want to have that mirror in front of him to show him what he needs to fix and which other things he doesn't consider and how he drops the responsibility from his life on many, many topics. And he doesn't want that. So he chooses to lie 
because he doesn't feel comfortable walking in the path of truth. But while doing that, he's separating himself from the Creator, even by doing six hours of Itbadadut in the field. Because he's standing and lying to the King of all kings, that except of your will and your holy desire to come closer to him and to be willing to change, he doesn't want anything from you. Rahmana li babai, the merciful Creator, he wants the heart. He wants the intention. He doesn't need you to stand for six hours and to be the pillar of prayer. He needs you to be honest. And when you will be honest and you will go to Hashem and tell Him, listen, whew, too much for me. I don't know how to deal with that. The true is so tense, like she's rebuking me and I see that she's saying the truth, but I don't know how to take all of that on my back. I don't know how to change in all those aspects, to care, take care of all those issues. It's too heavy. In the mornings, in the noon, in the evenings, in the night, she always got something to say. Sometimes it becomes hard, sometimes it's too heavy. If you will come with that to Hashem, so at least you were honest. And then be honest and keep with your honest prayer and say to Hashem, find me a solution. Give me an answer to my problem. Give me strength, give me power. Let me know how to solve my issues one after the, one after the other. Then the light of Hashem will shine for you even to the darkest places of them all. Even if you fail to failures, to horrible destructions, to horrible sins and crimes against the will of Hashem, but you will come back to Him like that it's written that He is waiting for the person until the last moment of His life and asking, Hashem is asking, when will He come back to me? When will she come back to me? While He is waiting for you, you still have a chance no matter how much you messed up. The issue is that we don't understand the real power and greatness of the tshuva, of the ability to come back to Hashem and to fix everything that we did. We don't understand how mercy and kind is our Creator, our loving Father. How always the door is opened and the hand is reaching to accept us back, that we will come back to Him. The door is always open, always open, always open. But you need to find that power inside of you to go in that middle of truth and to be truthful. And when you're being rebuked and you feel the shame, you're not allowed to run away from that shame. You must take advantage of that rebuke and to remind yourself that Hashem rebukes the ones that He loves and to take that message and to work on yourself. And it's okay to feel that you're not able to change. What does she want from me? What does He want from me? It's too much for me. I don't know how to do that. Okay, that is understandable and acceptable. It's okay if you're really weak and you're going to explain, hey, it's too hard for me. That's why we're here for you to teach you, to guide you. That's why Hashem is lengthening your life to give you long life that you will be able to improve and to work on yourself and to achieve perfection. And you have 120 years, you have 70, 80, 90 years. Work! The world is in front of you, the time is in front of you, the future is in front of you. Work! It's not your job to complete, it's not your job to, to accomplish. Your job is to put the effort and to try to do the best that you can. As much as you'll find power in your hand, that's how much you should do. So do, as much as you can. No one expects you to know things that you never learned or to be able to do things that you never been taught how to or things that you never practiced or haven't practiced enough on them. And even if it's only because that your mind is weak and that you're lost and confused and struggle with horrible things in your back of your mind and you're suffering and even if you're lazy and that's your problem and even if you're in depression and that's your problem and even if you're a whiner and you're whining and you're lazy and you don't want to do anything and you are aware to your problem that that is your problem and now you want to work on it so now it's already okay if you're really going to work on it, a little bit, one step at a time. 
one day at a time. Every day try to do something. In every situation try to be as honest as you can, as truthful as you can. That's how you connect yourself to the king of all kings, by the midah of truth. And then from the truth you will reach shalom, peace. And then through that peace, that understanding, how, how by me working on my Mida of truth, that I'll become a truthful person, that's a guarantee that I'll have peace. If she's a woman of war, if she doesn't want peace, if she will continue rebuking and fighting with me, even though that I'm always saying the truth and became so truthful that you can go crazy from my truth, how you can promise me that I will reach the Mida of peace, that I'll have peace, that I will enjoy peace. The verse said it, Hashem said it, it's a guarantee, it's a promise. Emet ve'ashalom ehav. When you will reach truth, you will reach peace, and through that you'll have love. And they depend on each other. And you need to do your job to be as truthful as you can. And then, when your partner will see you, that you're honest, he will appreciate your honesty. The fact that you're always trying to run away from commitment, that you try to escape from responsibility, always trying to avoid, always try to deny, always try to plaster and to cover, and you're not dealing with the truth, by that you are upsetting your partner. By that you make your partner feel that you and him are not in the same place, in the same, in the same house, that you live separate kind of lives, that you diff life are separated, that you're walking in different ways. Why? Because when she says the truth and she knows that she says the truth, or when he says the truth and she knows that he says the truth, and one of them is choosing to lie, that's where the separation started. But if you will accept the rebuke, if you will accept the rebuke that is connected to you even, not all the rebuke. Let's say for an example that your partner tells you that you're lazy and you know about yourself that you're not lazy at all. You wake up every morning at five, you catch the first minyan, you go to, to shul, to synagogue, you pray, you work for eight hours every day, you bring the kids back from school, you go do shopping, you also clean the house, you help. You are not a lazy person. But listen, wait. She just told you you are lazy. Instead of arguing with her on those parts of your life that you know about yourself that you're not lazy, why won't you try to listen? Maybe there is an aspect that is connected to the now situation that just took place between you. Maybe you were acting lazy. So if you want to learn, you will try while being rebuked to pay attention to your behavior. Maybe in 1% out of a million, you are lazy. So why do you care so much if she called you lazy when there is 1% of laziness inside of you? If you would really not be a lazy person, you would try to listen and to learn how to improve yourself and you would work on your midot to achieve perfection and never to be lazy. So you would love the rebuke if you would want to learn. The reason that you don't want to learn and you see that her rebuke doesn't fit reality is because that you choose to be lazy. Is because that you don't really want to work on yourself and improve yourself. So your will that is arguing with the divine will that wants you to change and improve is blocking you and holding you back from achieving completion in Avodat Amidot. But if you will want to learn, if you will want to improve, you will achieve perfection in every aspect of your life. And I'm talking from experience. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm talking from experience. I want to learn. And I learned so much. And I haven't achieved perfection yet. But I learned so much from the rebuke, because there are 48 things that are needed for the person to know the wisdom of Hashem. 48 kinyanim, things that he needs to buy to achieve the brain, that the numeral value of the word moach, brain, is 48. 
48 ways of behavior that are required for the person to have midot, good attributes to have if he wants to be a vessel that will have the ability to contain the blessing, the light of Hashem. One of them is Ehovet HaTochecha. You should love the rebuke. Because if you don't love the rebuke, if you don't realize that when the Creator is rebuking you, He is rebuking you with one intention, that He loves you and He appreciates you, that you have the ability to learn and that's why He's teaching you. Why am I teaching you now? Because I believe that you can learn. If I wouldn't think that you're able to learn, I wouldn't come here. I would go and speak somewhere else so that I would go and speak to myself if I would see that there are no audience, no people to listen that really cares about my thoughts, about my, about my wisdom, the wisdom that I'm sharing. I wouldn't speak. I'm coming because I know that there, is a, a, there are results to my effort because I see my students are improving and growing and learning and listening and achieving and trying and working on it and, and, and I see results. I'm harvesting while I'm seeding. I see that with my eyes. So it gives me the strength and the desire to continue and come and teach again. That's the only reason why a person is teaching, because he's got students. And Melech Belo Am, and Rabbi Belo Talmidim. There is no king without people, without a nation, and there is no teacher without students. Students are learners. So when Hashem chooses to teach you, it's because that He believes in you. So you need to believe in yourself. So for that you need to know yourself. And to know yourself, it's to know the Creator. To achieve da'at, knowledge, wisdom, understanding the Creator, la'dat et Hashem, to know Hashem. The, the, words, the word da'at is built from three letters, dalet, ein, dal, taf. Dalet, ein, taf. Those letters built the verse da'at smechat chila. First of all, you need to know yourself. If you don't know yourself, first know yourself. If you first not going to know yourself, you will never know Hashem. If you want to see something on your television, you must learn how to work with the remote control. If you won't learn it, you won't be able to access to the other part. If you want to drive your car, you must know where your car keys. If you need to know how to drive. Is a learning on who that you are, the tool of connection, the, the connect, connecting part between you to the Creator is your physicality, is your body, is your spirit, is the qualities of your soul. If you're not going to know yourself, you will never going to know Hashem. Because where is Hashem? Above you. So you need to go through yourself. You need to clean yourself. You need to find yourself. You need to know yourself. Who you really are. Who is the real you inside of you? Who are you? And what are your qualities? And what are the things that you need to work on? So for that self-awareness, a person must attach and connect himself to the Midah of Truth. Because as long as you're allowing yourself to lie to yourself, and you keep on choosing excuses, and justifying yourself always, and rejecting the precious learning from the life's rebuke that we're receiving on daily basis, we're staying ignorant, and we're not able to learn. So when you're not waking up early enough in the morning, ask yourself the truth. Why really I am not waking up in the morning? And walk away from the excuses of, I hate the mornings, I don't like to wake up in the... Ask yourself why. Why the morning is such a curse for you? Why you love your pillow so much? Why you have such an amazing relationship with your pillow and you hate your wife so much? Why? Be honest. Why? Why you rather to stay uh, another couple of hours in the bed? Why you choose and you rather to be lazy? Say the truth to yourself. You don't need to go and spread your lackings in public. You don't need to do tshuva in public. Not everyone are sinners like me that must do tshuva in public on daily basis.
Not everyone got that punishment from heaven that they need to expose their guts in front of thousands of people. Only someone that destroyed thousands of people's life, he needs to fix thousands of people. But if you just ruin few people, so you just need to apologize to few people around you. Someone like me needs to say I'm sorry to thousands of, of people. That's why I'm asking always, is it too late now to say sorry? I'm never receiving the right answer, so I'll keep on apologizing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Once I went in the street and I saw a beggar, a very poor one, a broken one, not healthy one, that he was asking for charity, but actually he was not asking for charity at all. He was asking forgiveness. To everyone he was saying slicha, slicha, slicha. He was just saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, excuse me, excuse me. He was just asking slicha, forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness from every person that was walking. Probably his intention in his mind was to ask for charity. He was begging for money. But when I was walking and I heard him asking forgiveness from everyone, sorry, sorry, slicha in, in the holy language, I said to myself, that person got an issue with thousands of people that he needs to ask forgiveness from. Immediately I took charity and I gave it to him, money that I had, I gave it to him and I told him, I forgive you. Even that he didn't ask for real forgiveness, he wasn't there, he wanted money. But I knew, I felt that his soul was asking for forgiveness. So I told him, I forgive you. I didn't saw him ever before in my life, at least in my memory, in my mind, in this lifetime. But if he's sitting for years of his life and saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So someone needs to forgive him at least. So we need to learn from life what really life is all about. In relationship, you want to have kosher life, you want to have wonderful houses, you want to have beautiful, amazing children, you want all the good to have, you want to have a life of light, of inspiration, of, of, of holiness, of purity. All those good things required an effort from your side, from the side of truth. Not from the side of religion. I'm going to keep on screaming on that topic until all of my friends will wake up. Religion, it's a wonderful tradition. We're obligated to keep all Torah and mitzvot with no doubt, with no doubt. We're not allowed to move from any paragraph in the Shulchan Aruch, the rules of the Jewish table, Jewish life. But... Sometimes words of Torah are thin and empty and lacking in one place and they're receiving their completion and you can see the complete picture only through different words of Torah that are written in a different part of the same book. So all those attributes, good behaviors, manners that the, they are defined as the derch eretz, the way of the land, way of behavior between people are before and more important of all Torah and mitzvot. So it's true, just to be polite and nice and kind is not the complete picture. But those are the foundation of the Shulchan Aruch. Without that for sure you cannot be a righteous man. Without being polite and nice and kind and caring and generous and loving and supportive and, 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 and helping and, 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 and all good ways of behavior or manners, if you don't have that, so the main intention is still lack from the book. You, you still like, it's an empty book. Just to be a donkey that carry books, just to dress like, like or, an orthodox Jew with a long beard, Okay, and you can be a criminal in your mind. You can be completely separated from the Almighty. You can be completely separated from the Creator in your mind because you are Dover Shkarim, because you're a liar. Lying to yourself even. Always blaming everyone else. Always seeing the defaults of other people. Judging, criticizing. Who, who is criticizing all the time? The devil. Who is judging everyone all of the time? The devil. Who is presenting the lackings of everyone to, to Hashem all of the time? The devil. If you find yourself that you are in that side, so like turn on the light, you're in the dark side. Something is wrong with you. 
Work on yourself to be positive, to judge people favorably. And you cannot forgive other people before you forgive yourself. When you want to love your friend, you should love him like you love yourself. When you still haven't done tshuva, haven't came back to Hashem, haven't fixed yourself, you cannot love no one. You cannot love when you don't know what love is all about. And love is, has got so many faces. So many faces. And on all kinds of crimes and sins, love can cover. When you reach love, how you reach love? Like we said before, by connecting yourself to the truth and by that making peace with your company, with your surroundings. Because when they will see that you're holding yourself in Midat Ayamet, that you're a truthful and honest person, they will learn from you. They will respect you. They will want to be close to you. They will explain themselves to you in better ways, much nicer. They will rebuke you less. They will show their love and appreciation to you. They're not going to argue with you. They're just going to talk to you. Because they will see that you're a person that can discuss with, that can talk with. And they will use it, they will enjoy that. Maybe it will take time. Maybe after a few years of you arguing and fighting, it will be hard for you to buy the trust that you demolished and destroyed with your bare hands by arguing and fighting and criticizing for years. Maybe a certain time is required to heal to rebuild the destructions of this relationship. But it doesn't mean that you won't achieve it finally if you're not going to give up from being truthful, from being honest. And it doesn't mean always nice. It doesn't mean doing only grace. Sometimes the person of truth is Hashem Ishmil Chama. Even the Creator, sometimes he can be a man of war. There are times that you need to go and fight. You need to fight for the poor. You need to fight for the truth. You need to fight for justice. There are many situations that you need to use your power and judgments. Not always to be soft and nice and calm and relaxed. Sometimes you need to, to throw away some tables. Sometimes you need to do for Hashem. Et la'asot la'ashem, efevu toratecha. Sometimes when you want to do things for Hashem, you need to know even how to violate the rules of the Torah. Like the Mishnah is saying. Those are the privilege of a the people that are seeking for the truth. How are you going to seek for the truth? Being aware to your own senses. Being aware to yourself while being asked, while being offered, while being suggested. When you find yourself in certain situations in life, if you feel that you're about to lie, don't do that. Don't lie. Because when you're lying, you're separating yourself from Hashem. And when you're being a person of truth, you're bringing the blessing of the Creator back into your life. So use your own sensor of truth. Like the verse is saying, Divrei emet nikavim, words of truth are close to be recognized, are easily recognized. You can recognize inside of yourself if you are about to act with truth or that you're faking or that you're lying or that you're scamming or that you're afraid and hiding you know when you're lying and you know when you're open and honest and straight so attach yourself to that side of illumination the side that is shining from within to your connection to truth that starts inside inside and it will bring you to bring that blessing and that wisdom to all parts of your life to all of your life situations it depends in your intention it depends in your holy desire to connect yourself to the truth and those words of truth that simple truth that you will be guided by that will be the light of your path that will be the light that will shine your life will illuminate the world with the light of the divine truth you will find the power to bring god into places that 
we're not even welcoming the concept God, that we're not even able and willing to, to, to discuss and to speak about the Creator of the world, but because that they will see that you are an honest and honorable and truthful person, a loyal person, so they will be willing to hear you, and they will listen to you, and they will want to learn from you, and then you will have the access and the ability to share more wisdom and to influence more, and to bring more water, and to help them to wash themselves from the negativity, and from their own lies, and from the fact that they are themselves are still lost, and cannot find their true happiness, their true path. The way to do that is first of all, kshot atzmecha connect yourself to the truth first. You must be a person of truth if you want the truth to shine from you. When Moshe came down from Mount Sinai, after attaching, connecting himself to the Creator, his face was glowing, glowing. People couldn't look at him because he was shining so much. Why? Because he saw Hashem face to face. Because he was speaking to Hashem face to face. What was he speaking? Words of truth. Words of truth, he was begging, and he was crying, and he was talking, and he was trying, and he put his heart into it. With his qualities, with his character, with who that he was. He was talking to Hashem from his life experience, from his past, from what that he'd been through in life. That was his approach. That what was what that was what that he brought to the discussion, to the table in front of Hashem. But you told me, but you called me, but you asked me, but I went for you, but I did this, I did that, but that happened. But he was talking from his point of truth. He was honest with Hashem, and that honesty connected him to become similar to the to the Creator, to his master, to his rabbi. He became like him. He became the divine man, Isha Elohim. Moshe, the letters of the word Moshe and Hashem, the creator, are similar. Moshe is Mem, Shin, and He. Hashem is He, Shin, and Mem. Same letters, different combination, different order, but the same letters. Because he received the face of his rabbi, who kibel penerabo. He received the face of God. Because he went into the darkness because Hashem was there. He was ready to go through all the rebukes, all the insultings, all the shames, all the claims and all the thunders and darkness and fog, lightnings and, 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 and pain that were part of his path. He was willing to learn. So he was ready to sacrifice because his desire was to connect and attach himself to the truth. That's why he achieved it. That's why he was chosen to be the messenger to deliver the wisdom of truth, the wisdom Torah Emet, Torah Moshe, the wisdom of truth, the wisdom of Hashem is the wisdom of Moshe. He received it from Hashem. And when he was talking to his people, he was telling them, it's the mouth of Hashem that is speaking to you. Because he was nullifying himself to the divine will always. He never did what that he wanted to do. He wanted with all of his heart to keep God's will. And he was willing to do whatever Hashem will tell him. And when he heard that Hashem told him something that he couldn't understand, he told Hashem, I'd rather to die than to go against your will. Because it cannot be that you're going to tell me that you want to kill your children. It's crazy. It cannot be that you will tell me that you want to exile your children. It's crazy. If Moshe would live in this generation, if there would be a person like Moses in this generation that wouldn't back off, that wouldn't surrender to the decrees, we would be redeemed already. But we're always falling, always giving up, always falling to our depression and our frustrations and our selfishness. Always being self-centered, but what can I do? But who am I? Following, falling to that low self-esteem of not understanding that we are those ones that have that gift 
that can deliver the message and the news of Hashem to this generation. It's your responsibility like that it's mine. There is no difference between you and me. In a place that there is no man, you need to be that man. I need to be that man. You should try with all your power to deliver the voice of truth to the world, no matter what will be the cause, no matter what will be the result of your effort to deliver the truth. Yirmiyahu the prophet was being kicked in his face. Moshe Rabbeinu been rebuked and been judged by thousands, hundreds of rabbis and thousands of people excommunicated him. He had to go out from the camp. Huge, noble, righteous people fought for the truth and had to suffer and to go through huge amounts of pain and disgrace and sorrow because they were fighting for the divine truth, the truth of the Creator. And if you're a person of truth, so you will do the same. And how? Connect yourself to the voice of truth. Be truthful, then you will hear it. As long as you're lying to yourself about who that you are, and you're making discounts to yourself whenever you feel like it, so you're not tuned to the voice of truth. So you can't hear it, so you cannot deliver it. So if you want to, you must work on yourself. So that's my introduction for Shalom Bayit. So good luck. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.